Ah, okay, okay. So thank you very much. So I'm going to talk about our research on numerical weather prediction and data simulation using Fugaku and the future perspective. So we had a very strong motivation for our research for very short range weather prediction. So this happened in 2008 in Kobe in the summer and this river became like this only in 10 minutes and five people unfortunately died at that time so we would like to predict uh, this type of event so to do that at that time uh, when we started our research in 2013 we had a new supercomputer at that time k supercomputer and uh, we also had a new observing systems like a phase array with a radar. Um, this produce, produces a hundred times of more data. Um, we have a powerful supercomputer to process all of this data. So data simulation is to combine the observations and simulations to make prediction. And because the data is a hundred times more we call this new system as big data assimilation. So we got a very successful results like this, but we spent like three years for the initial development. So the top left is the observation and top right is what we developed in a com So in the computer, we assimilate this observation very well so that it produces a very fine structure of this heavy rain system. And this movie is available on YouTube. So if you go to this uh, YouTube web page, then uh, you can see the whole movie. And this has uh, more than 42,000 views at this time. And this is included as a uh, Riken channel content. And there are more than several like several thousand weekend channel contents and this movie has ranked number it's ranked number 11 at this moment it's kind of going down but it's still high so we have the observation like this and the scale is like this so it's about 15 to 20 kilometers wide and about five kilometers uh, in this direction. Uh, this the red line shows 10 kilometer in, in the height. And we have very fine structure like this and the observation is every 30 seconds. So we run 100 meter mesh simulation and take all of these observation data every 30 seconds and assimilate this data to get this. But if we have no data assimilation, that's the regular weather forecasting system at this moment. We have nothing like this. So we have basically no predictability for this type of event. So we developed the system for prediction in real time. So the last year in 2020, uh, there was a plan to have the Tokyo Olympic games. So we arranged with the University of Tokyo and Tsukuba University for a partial exclusive use of Oak Forest Park supercomputer that they operate. And we run every 30 second refresh real time prediction in the summer period when the Paralympic games were originally planned. So we could produce this uh, real time prediction very well and so we are now verifying and try to publish the first results from the previous year experiment and try to improve for the next year. And this year in 2021, um, we st still have a plan to have the Olympic and Paralympic games in Tokyo. So, and also Fugaku will be available uh, for use. So we 
try to use this Fugaku computer time for the real time weather prediction. So data simulation, as I said, is like a plus sign to combine the observations and simulations and add value by combining the data-driven approach and process-driven approach. These are uh, completely different approaches to prediction and estimation. So the data simulation workflow is, is like this. So simulator is process-driven. So we have a simulator on the computer and that takes the initial state and then produce the future state or the simulated state. And when we observe this state in the real atmosphere or the real phenomena in general, um, we take the observation and then combine with this simulated state. This the big black box of the data simulation produces the next initial state to, to evolve in time. So this is a feedback loop so that we keep getting the observations and keep this initial state as good as possible. So here uh, we have the green box. So in general, what is observed is not the exact state in this simulation. So we need to have this green box that's a converter from the simulation to the observations. So this is the observation in the simulation world. So we need to simulate the observation, like the radar. Uh, th there is no radar in the simulation model. So we have the rain distribution or something like this here. And then we have a radar simulator here to observe the simulated atmosphere. So once we have this green box, we can take the observations and include it in, within this loop. Okay, so what we have explored using the K-computer was to, to pioneer the future of the numerical weather prediction by running the orders of magnitude bigger computations to combine the big data with big simulations. So now uh, we were thinking how to expand our research into the next uh, step. So now we have the AI here. What we have developed was the big data simulation system here. Uh, we have the new sensors to observe the real, uh, real world nature. Uh, we get the data in the cyberspace and then the simulator uh, we can combine through the big data simulation. Now we have the AI that can help many parts. And also we have the human society and the economy that is affected by the nature. So we try to synchronize in a broader sense that does between the cyberspace and the real world. So that's the scope for the uh, real-time weather prediction ap applied to the society. So uh, we now have Fugaku and the K was good for the big data assimilation, but Fugaku is basically a hundred times more powerful. So we were thinking how to use this computer power to improve our prediction in big data simulation. So we had a heavy rainfall event, historic event in last year, July. And we had a heavy rain here. This is the actual observation data. And we have a global model, NICAM. So we assimilate, um, not the radar observations, but other observations to simulate the case of the heavy precipitation. So with the powerful computer, we can run a high resolution and also the large ensemble. So this is the ensemble size. 64 is a typical choice. It's a little bit small, but uh, it's, a, it's still good. And 1000 is something that we can run on Fugaku relatively easily at this resolution of um, 56 kilometer. And here uh, we can see the temperature error. So, so the blue or white means the error is smaller. So the error is in general smaller. If we take the difference, the difference is negative. That means we have the smaller error with running a large ensemble. So that's the direct advantage of having a large ensemble. We have that smaller error, that's uh, high accuracy. 
And also we can represent, well, because of the small error, if you run a forecast, 10 day forecast or five day forecast or four day lead forecast, then this shows the probability of the heavy rain. So we have high probability of the heavy rain five days in advance, we can predict very well. So of course the four day forecast is better than five day forecast. And, but the 10 day forecast is, is much worse. So we focus on this five day forecast and run at different sample size to take the probability. In general, if you have a large ensemble, it's, we can have a better probability di distribution. It's, it's of course, uh, but we can visualize like this so that if you run a thousand ensemble members, then we can have a better representation of this probability at the five day lead forecast. So if we run 64, we, we have some probability, but it's not well represented. So we can clearly see the advantage of having a large ensemble in the probability. And also we can take the ensemble based correlations to look for the reason for this heavy rain. So this is, this is a lag correlation, so six hour lag. So with a heavy precipitation to the um, moisture distribution. So with a thousand ensemble members, we remove most of the noise. So we, with fewer ensemble members, we have a lot of noise from the sampling error. So even 500, we still have these uh, noise. We know that these are noise because 1,000 uh, doesn't show it. So if we focus on our interest area, so this is where we have the heavy rain. And six hours before the heavy rain, uh, we had a moist air distributed like this, and also the dry air in this area corresponding to the trough, upper level trough. And that is also important to intensify or enhance the rain uh, system in this area. So this kind of research is possible using Fugaku. Another thing that we have explored is what if we had this phase array radars covering whole Kyushu. This is not available at this moment, but we can do the observing system simulation experiment. So this is a virtual observing system and we can verify what will be the impact on the forecast. So this is a one hour uh, rain forecast. And we have a very detailed um, rain pattern observed. So this is the truth, because this is a simulation experiment, we need a truth. And if we have no data assimilated, then we have the heavy rain shifted a lot southward. And we had a heavy rain here in Kumamoto prefecture where we had a disaster. And with assimilating the virtual uh, observing network, the radars, uh, we have much improved prediction like this. And even two hours, we can still have the good impact. Okay, so another aspect of Fugaku, what has been discussed in this um, symposium already many times, it is good for both machine learning and, and the big simulations or the big data simulation. But the K was not really suitable for machine learning and other HPCs, some are very good for a big data simulation or the simulations, but may not be good for machine learning. So what we did, what we need to do with this type of computer is that we produce a lot of data and move the data to a proper machine for machine learning. So if we, do, if we have a very big supercomputer and produce a lot of data, then we cannot move around the data or it's basically impossible because of the size of the data. So Fugaku allows us to run the machine learning using the data from the big simulation. The data can be hundreds or hundreds petabytes or even more, like exabytes or hundred exabytes or something. It's easy because uh, we have a lot of computer power that can produce a lot of data. So we run a high resolution simulation and that produce a lot of data. And we also have observations and all of these are the source for machine learning. And if we think about the data simulation procedure, 
then we can easily come up with these ideas where we can apply machine learning uh, to accelerate the system or to improve the whole uh, procedure. So we tested some ideas like this. So we have the data from the radar that's not really big, but we have also the data from numerical weather prediction system. This can be big. And, but this gives us a future data. And if you apply the time series machine learning algorithm like the LSTM, then we can take the past time series of observations and the future time series of the simulation data and to combine to improve, to produce the best possible forecast. And we tested some real case studies and we found that this uh, LSTM plus the numerical weather prediction produced the best results so far. So this is a skill score, so it's the higher the better. And we improve all the other systems. And another idea is to accelerate the model computation here using the surrogate model. So we can run, so the goal is to accelerate this expensive high resolution model um, calculation. So we need to run very high resolution model. That's why we need uh, high performance computers, uh, exclusive use in real time. But if we can produce a lot of data in advance offline, then we don't really need to secure a large part of the supercomputing system, but instead we can run this high resolution model offline and produce a lot of data and try to train these neural networks. So this red one is a purely data-driven surrogate model. And an alternative is to use the low resolution model that doesn't require a big computation, but it still has some process-driven uh, component here at the low resolution. So to fill in the gap between the low resolution representation and high resolution representation, we use a neural network. So this is a hybrid approach. So we tested the idea with a quasi-geostrophic model that's an idealized system for the proof of concept. And this is shows the accuracy, the higher good. And the data-driven approach drop the skill of the prediction very quickly. But the hybrid approach can keep the, the skill very well. So, and this is a chaotic system. So even if we have the high resolution model, uh, we, we, it should be similar to the screen. But we can save a lot of computer time. If we run the high resolution model, it takes this computer time, but we can reduce by using the neural network or the hybrid approach a little more than the neural network, but uh, it's still a third of the computer time. So it's a triple um, acceleration by a factor of three. Okay, and uh, okay, so I, let me wrap up. So here I talked about the observation simulator. So we tested using the machine learning uh, for the radiative transfer for satellite observations. So this worked very well so that uh, we can produce as accurate uh, weather prediction as using the physical radiative transfer model. So the idea is to use the AI in data simulation, but we should move forward fusing the algorithm, algorithms of the AI and data simulation on the HPC. That is possible on Fugaku and will uh, create a new meteorology. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. This is, this is the end of my talk.